Before I even start, I just want to address that although Macs aren't worth it to everyone, there is a demographic of people who kind of need what Apple has to offer, which is their stellar build quality, their software and hardware integration, and just the convenience of having a Mac that just works and is maybe portable in the MacBook Pro's case. But for most of us, we're just looking to buy high-end hardware, and some of us want the Mac OS experience, which sadly ties us to the Apple ecosystem, which is really really expensive. Now, if you didn't already know, Apple just launched a new lineup of MacBook Pro. They just integrated the eighth generation Intel Core processors into the high-end 13-inch with touch bar and the 15-inch with touch bar. Now, despite the fact that performance has skyrocketed, uh, I still don't think you get what you're paying for in most cases, you know, if you are not of that demographic that I said that needs or really wants a Mac. So if you are craving the Mac OS experience, want high-end hardware, but aren't willing to give up your arm or leg or kidney even to get a MacBook Pro or really a Mac in that case, there is an awesome alternative called Hackintosh. And I'm sure many of you out there have already heard of this, but for those who haven't, it's really just a custom built system that is capable of running Mac OS through a few tweaks and hacks. And speaking of Hackintosh, I've been using one for the past three years to edit most of my videos. And you know, you may be thinking if you're a professional, oh, well, is it reliable? And you know, can I count on it to run and process my things, you know, without crashing? And the answer is yes, you can, if you do it right. Now, before you're thinking, oh, oh no, I, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm not a tech genius. How, how am I supposed to? You don't have to be an expert to put a Hackintosh together. You don't have to be an expert to put a PC together. I mean, it's kind of like Legos. You just kind of like put one component here and then that component goes here. It's, it's pretty straightforward. There's tons and tons of support and videos on the internet. So if you are already discouraged, don't be. It's not impossible. It's actually not that hard to pull off. So with Hackintosh, you are not only getting the Mac OS experience with a few workarounds and some elbow grease, mind you, but you are getting a ton more bang for your buck and you are gaining versatility and upgradability, which is non-existent in most Apple products. So you can add storage, you can upgrade your hardware down the line without having to worry about your product being a soldered piece of metal and glass, which is pretty much stagnant and unchangeable for the rest of its lifespan. So for the sake of this video, I've compiled three PC parts lists, all of which have hardware that is capable of running Mac OS and you know doing many tasks like video editing and 3D rendering, photo editing, etc. Any creative work you can think of. And mind you, these lists are just suggestions. I'm not saying you have to buy these exact components to get the same performance. There are tons of build guides online that you can follow to a T if you don't want to do a ton of tinkering. So like I said, this is just kind of like a guideline to go by in terms of specs. So first up, let's go with my first list, which is titled cheapest MacBook Pro Hackintosh alternative. And by cheapest, I don't mean poor quality. I just chose more utilitarian parts. So first up, we got the processor, which is the Intel Core i7 8700K, which is gonna be the same throughout all these builds. It is a six core eighth generation processor, great for video rendering any hardcore CPU tasks. It's also overclockable, which is why I opted with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, cooler, it's cheap, it's effective, and it's pretty much standard in most, you know, budget-oriented builds. Um, next up, we have the Gigabyte H370M motherboard. It's nothing too fancy. I just went on the go-to Hackintosh website, Tony Max x86, and looked at the, you know, recommended motherboards. This is one of them, and it supports up to 64 gigs of RAM, and it's micro ATX. Next up, we got a Ripjaws V-Series 16 gigabyte DDR4 kit clocked at 2400 megahertz, perfect for video editing and any creative tasks you may have. Uh, Next up, we got a Samsung 850 EVO series, 500 gigabyte, two and a half inch solid state drive or SSD. Mind you, it's not as fast as the internal storage in the MacBook Pro, but it is certainly fast and I have a ton of them in my system here. Booting up is snappy, opening applications is snap. And you get a ton of storage there uh, for a really good price. Uh, what is it? $134 versus the thousands of dollars you'd spend on NVMe storage within the MacBook Pro. Speaking of storage, we have even more with the Western Digital Black Series two terabyte drive I put in this build. Um, that's great for video files and any big files you want to store. Uh, WD Black Drives are for professionals, you know, whether you're a gamer or in this case, a content creator. Uh, they don't fail, they're very reliable. And I mean, if you're doing video editing, which is in my case, you don't necessarily need an SSD to render on. It doesn't make too much of a difference because your computer can only process so much data at once. I'm sure there's a better explanation for that, but you know, do your homework. I'm sure you'll find a similar conclusion. So a hard drive is great for those kind of tasks. 
Next up, we got the graphics card, which is a significant component if you keep in mind GPU acceleration, which is really important to my task, which is editing in Final Cut Pro. It can make a huge difference in rendering speed and overall performance when you're scrubbing and all that. Uh, I opted for the Sapphire Radeon RX 580. This is the Pulse model. It has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 significantly better than that of the highest end graphics processor in the MacBook Pro 15 inch, which is the Radeon 560X, I believe, with four gigs of GDDR5. This card apparently works natively with macOS, which is a huge bonus. It just works great in conjunction with the already powerful 8700K processor. Uh, for a case, we have the very famous NZXT S340 and white, and you can get whatever color you want. I like white because of my desk setup here. I have a white NZXT H440 back there. Um, it looks really clean, and if you want want the aesthetic that you're missing with an Apple product, I mean, it, it just looks really nice in my opinion. And lastly, we have an EVGA Supernova G3 80 plus bronze, uh, 650 watt power supply, really reliable. Um, I personally would go with that with any build really. No reason to spend a lot more money on a power supply if you don't have to. So the total price of this rig is just under $1,300. You're getting significantly more performance with the RX 580 and the desktop grade um, processor a ton more storage at like half the cost. I think it's like 54% of the cost of the baseline MacBook Pro 15 inch and 45% of the cost of the higher end non-configured MacBook Pro 15 inch. For the second configuration, this is my ideal Hackintosh build. It's a little more souped up, a little more fancy, a little more expensive, but pretty much has the same specifications as the cheaper alternative that I mentioned. So we still have the 8700K, great six core processor, perfect for my needs, which is video editing. In this case, we have the Kraken X62 uh, liquid cooler. It's an AIO or all-in-one liquid cooler. Great for overclocking a bunch. Looks really awesome too. Next up, we have a motherboard that is a little more fancy. It is a Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming Wi-Fi. Uh, revision one for that matter is just about $100 perfect for my needs. Um, we have 32 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics Sport LTDDR4 memory, that is 2400 megahertz. For storage, we have a Samsung 970 Evo 250 gig NVMe drive, very fast storage. Uh, I don't need a ton of storage for my boot drive, I just need enough space to fit my applications and some files. Uh, and with that, although I don't need it, but this is for people who don't have pre-existing storage like I have, I have a ton of hard drives in this rig I have back here. I have a four terabyte uh, WD Black, like I said, great for content creation, very reliable, won't fail on you. In terms of the video card, we have the same Sapphire RX 580, native support, great for GPU acceleration in Final Cut Pro. And then for the case, we have a little fancier, still the NZXT X340, but this is the Elite model. It's a temper class side piece and just looks really sexy and would go great with my setup. And lastly, we have the same EVGA power supply, 650 watt, 80 plus bronze for only 50 bucks. So in total, this rig costs $1,647. If we compare that to the MacBook Pro, uh, it is $800 less than the baseline 15 inch MacBook Pro and about $1,000 less than the unspected or unaltered higher end 15 inch MacBook Pro. And once again, you're getting a significant bump in performance with that RX 580. You got the versatility of overclocking your processor and you get a ton more storage. Third configuration is kind of price matched to a spec'd out MacBook Pro, not in storage, because I would assume that most people want to upgrade the processor to the Core i9 and to 32 gigs of RAM before they get more storage, because most people like to edit on an external drive and don't want to spend like a thousand to three thousand more dollars on internal storage. So I spec out the MacBook Pro of the higher end model to, like I said, the Core i9 and 32 gigs of RAM, kept it at 512 gigs, and that runs for about $3,500. So I price matched this third rig, which I titled the Insane Rig, um, to kind of show how much more you're getting for the money. So for this third Insane Rig, I opted for the Core i9-7900X. This is a 10 core processor we're talking about, overclockable too, uh, so much better than the six core Core i9 you would find in a spec out MacBook Pro. Uh, for the cooler, we still have the Kraken X6 62, high performance, looks great. For the motherboard, we have a fair price variant from Gigabyte, that is the X299 Aorus Ultra Gaming Pro, that is an ATX motherboard. In terms of memory, I opted for the Trident ZRGB kit from uh, G-Skill, that's a 32 gig kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. Um, it's kind of expensive, I kind of opted for it to meet the price range, but yeah, it looks cool. You can really adjust the colors and how it looks in Windows if you want to install it, and yeah, RGB for the win. In terms of internal storage, we have a Samsung 970 Evo 2TB NVMe M.2 drive. 
uh, really fast storage, not as fast as what you find on the current MacBook Pro lineup, but really fast nonetheless, faster than your typical SSD. And in conjunction with the 970 EVO, we have not one, but two WD Black 4 terabyte drives. You can put those puppies in RAID, you can have up to eight terabytes of storage, do whatever you want with them. It's great to have if you work with a ton of footage, whether that's RAW or 4K. So yeah, a ton of storage that you wouldn't be getting with the spec'd out MacBook Pro. For the video card, we are at like iMac Pro level graphics. I opted for the Sapphire RX Vega 56 card with eight gigabytes of HBM2. That's even faster than GDDR5, a card that is significantly faster than the RX 580 and miles ahead of the integrated graphics you find in the high-end MacBook Pro 15 inch, uh, which is the 560X with four gigabytes of GDDR5. Huge difference in performance at a similar price point. For the case, I opted again for the NZXT S340 Elite in white and for the power supply, I opted for the EVGA Supernova G3, this time in a 700 watt variant. With all that said, what did we learn here today, Tom? Why do you ask questions like that? That's so weird. <laughs> so for one, like I said at the beginning of the video, there are always gonna be those people who are gonna opt for a full-fledged Mac, and there's nothing wrong with that. They just want to or are able to pay that Apple tax in order to get the premium design, build quality, uh, software and hardware integration, and just ease of taking something out of a box and having it work. But for most of us content creators, we can really only afford to pay for high performance rather than all the extras that come with you know, your typical Mac. So as I've said again and again, Go the Hackintosh route. For one, it's not impossible. You don't have to be a tech genius in order to build one and set one up. And secondly, it'll save you a ton of money. I mean like thousands of dollars in some cases. And thirdly, it's user upgradable and versatile. You don't have to worry about your machine dying in five years. You can just pop this baby open, put in a new hard drive, put in a new GPU, swap out the motherboard entirely and put in a new processor and more RAM etc etc you do not have a soldered piece of metal and glass that will depreciate in value and performance over time plus if you remotely enjoy gaming you can just slap another drive in here and run windows no problem remember this is just a custom built pc so you have the best of both worlds you have a fully functioning mac computer for all your creative or work needs and you can just dual boot to windows to game or maybe even to do other productivity stuff maybe even switch to windows if you're so inclined so yeah, owning a Hackintosh is really great if you can get past the build process and software installation, which isn't all that bad, by the way. Uh, you get the best of both worlds in terms of operating systems, you get the best in price or bang for your buck, and you get the best in versatility. You can just, like I said, upgrade the components like no one's business. So yeah, that wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. If you were considering buying the MacBook Pro 15 inch, I have the parts list that I referenced in the description down below. Like I said, for some of you guys, the MacBook Pro may be worth it to you, but for the rest of you guys, I suggest you save your hard earned money and buy smarter. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.